What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Indie Rundown Podcast. We are back with another indie film review. We've been getting so many of these lately. It's been nice to go back to our uh, to our indie roots and explore new films by a lot of very talented filmmakers that we've had the pleasure to interview lately. And the train doesn't stop here because today we have another great film, Division 19. It's a sci-fi post-apocalyptic thriller written and directed by Susie Halewood. Synopsis is... The year is 2039. Jails have been turned into online portals where the public gets to choose what prisoners eat, wear, watch, and who they fight. So successful is Panopticon TV. It is about to be rolled out to a whole town, providing subscribers even more choice. Now, my first initial thoughts going into this movie was I love sci-fi thriller, post-apocalyptic films, you know, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it, man. The, the premise hooked me right off the bat. So I went in with a blind eye. I didn't know anything about this, and I was I was I was surprised, man, because like I said, this genre, I you know I have a deep history with this genre. So I've always tried to wonder, you know, like how is the world going to end up one day? What is you know technology going to turn this world into? What's going to happen 50, 100, 500 years from now? When after, of course, we're all long gone. But it's always fun to think about. So it's always cool to see new takes on what the world could end up doing. And the way that Susie was able to write into what this post-apocalyptic world is, um, I, I don't want to give any spoilers away or go into story details and stuff like that, but um, I thought it was great. I thought she did a really good job, and uh, you know, the, if I want to get into technical aspects of it, I love the cinematography, man. The, the way this was shot, especially I believe it was in Detroit, among other places, but the way this was shot, man, it just really... It doesn't look like an independent film at all. It's it look you know I, I don't know what their budget is or if that's even relevant, but uh, it does not look like an indie film. And I remember texting Mike here uh, last night. I was like, man, I'm uh, what I don't remember my exact words, but I said like, dude, this does not look like an indie film at all. So um, yeah, man, I loved this film. I'm really curious to hear what Mike has to say about this movie because I think he kind of likes the sci-fi stuff too. So uh, what did you think, bro? Well, well, I'm I'm more curious about your deep history with the genre. You know how long how long you've been with it. How long you you know how long you, y'all still amicable right now? Or, or I mean, what's your deep history? We had a we had a breakup recently, but um, you know it's uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. His deep history with this. I mean, they go way. <laughs> you go way back, man. Post apocalyptic, bro. <laughs> I, I, I got such a deep history with it. Um, Deep, again, man. Susie Halewood, uh, very interesting, uh, lovely guest to, uh, definitely check out our episode with her. Um, you know, she does, a, uh, she explains in, in, in great detail, you know, kind of what, what goes about, what went about, uh, uh, you know, the decision to pick Detroit as a, as a, a location for their film. Again, what an excellent location. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a sad thing to say this about a city uh, that used to be one of the prominent cities in, in America. Um, but it is a great location for a post-apocalyptic, uh, movie or a dystopian, a movie about a dyst- that centered around being a, a, in a dystopian society, because even if you go check out all the documentaries or even, uh, you know, I think Anthony Bourdain went there too for one of his shows, um, uh, when he was when he was with CNN, and you just see uh, again infrastructure for two point five three million people, and now there's only eight hundred thousand nine hundred thousand people that live there. Mm-hmm. Could be more. Uh, and this was, you know, my reference point is from you know, several years back, so it could it could be on the uptick and all that. But in terms of a lot of land that's unaccounted for, a lot of dilapidated buildings that are remain empty, um, it is a great location and i think they really did a heck of a job uh using that to their advantage if you don't have to use cgi don't use it you know what i mean so it's uh i liked i like the setting i liked the um and more about more about susie she you know uh, a couple trivia points she started out as a painter also worked as a journalist and i think a lot of the 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 allegorical points come out you know because there's a lot of if you listen to our interview with her, a lot of uh, points from uh, you know Orwell's 1984, how we really, to a certain degree, are our own worst enemies and also are policing ourselves and restricting ourselves, whether it comes to freedom of speech, whether it comes to the information that we provide 
you know, huge outlets out there in social media, Facebook being one of them, probably one of the biggest funnels for information from a marketing standpoint, from a control standpoint. You know, she even said that, you know, CIA does provide funding for Facebook. So and I know that the, the you know, police stations use Facebook to, uh, you know, help track people as well. So mm. how much of that stuff that you put out there that on surface level may seem, you know, harmless or self gratifying and that could end up being your undoing later on, you know, you, even giving uh she made allusions to the, the you know, giving that to find out your ancestry, you're giving the, your gut your DNA to the government, essentially putting yourself into the system. Nothing could come about, but that that seven layers deep a, a, a decision that you make that's really seven layers deep, you're really only looking at the top two layers, not accounting for those uh, five layers below. Uh, something to think about, man. I think, uh, amongst other points, she she explores very well in this uh, in, in this movie. Um, and uh, check out our check out our episode with her too to to talk about how uh, you know the casting of 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 Linus Roach, which uh, a lot of people will quickly pick up on when they, when they watch uh, watch Division Nineteen. You know, whether you're a Law and Order fan or or, or, or what have you, but. Uh, uh, cool way that she got that got got him in the film, and yep. um, yeah, I enjoyed it. If, if if you like, um, I'm trying to find different like what, what would you say are other films of reference that you you can kind of draw people uh, just to draw comparisons, you know, with, with Division 19. The two that come to mind is uh, District Nine by Neil Blomkamp and I Am Legend. Even though I Am Legend really isn't the same premise, I kind of say that one just because of the uh, the, the dystopian feel. thing. Yeah, yeah, the, the feel. But District Nine really really reminds me a lot of District Nine. A little bit of the, maybe a touch of Blade Runner, just I uh, just like with the, with the drones, yeah, yeah, being under surveillance, the devices, people being yeah. up on the, on the wall, the, you know, when, uh, mm-hmm. when one of the brother, the main, uh, the lead character's brothers is is out on the loose, you know, all his, I thought it was a funny touch, all he he's sitting there on the sidewalk looking up at the big screen on the side of the building, the the the, the public. Uh, TV or the screen that they have out there that essentially is a bulletin board for the city that's showing that he's wanted. What's the reward for every single piece of information they could possibly give out about this guy? Mm-hmm. Which, you know, uh, this is set in the future. It's set in 2039, and you're seeing all the information that that they're kind of putting out there to help with the investigation. It's all stuff that's available right now on our phone. Yeah, yeah, they're putting interest, uh, locations he could possibly be, his favorite music, all this stuff out there. And I thought it was kind of cool. He's he's sitting down there looking at him, looking at his uh, wanted ad on the bulletin on the board. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a fun ride. Again, it's it, yeah. it's um it's a set. That, I thought it was fun too because it, the the setting and the and the genre of the movie lends itself more uh, to the type of movie that's going to be over two hours. You know, you, usually these type of movies are ep- long, epic films. This was 90 minutes, and it felt nice and tight, and it didn't mm-hmm. feel short, if that makes any sense. It, it no, it didn't. You got, you got the full meal. I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. the, act, the actors were great across the board. It was a cool world to see and to, and to dive into. So I thought, um, I thought uh, Susie did a great job. Again, it's getting great reviews on IMDb right now, 7.2 out of 10. And uh, then people ain't lying. I, I, I recommend checking this movie out. Again, it's going to be released April 5th, and we'll keep you posted as to uh, where you can find it. Yeah, it kind of had shades of um, a little bit of Minority Report, too. I had shades of that when I saw it as well. So just just all engine around that type of world. But, um, yeah, well, um, go see it. Be there. Be square. I believe Susie said it'd be in a lot of AMC theaters and a couple in uh, a lot of theaters in Los Angeles and stuff like that. So we will definitely, I don't know if we're going to have her episode released by the time this comes out, but we will definitely share everything on our Facebook page. So follow that and follow us everywhere else on social media at the Indie Rundown. And we will see y'all next week. Be sure to follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at the Indie Rundown and like our Facebook page, the Indie Rundown Podcast.